It is 6.30 <laughs> on Tuesday, December, uh, oh my God, okay, I quit. <laughs> February, it's February 20th, um, 2018. I will call the board selectman meeting to order. Um, start with our usual three announcements. First, this meeting is being recorded by KPN TV Access Corporation for future broadcast. Meeting is being filmed by volunteers from KPN TV. Meeting is being taped by um, our uh, Finance Committee Secretary, Gail Hunter, for accuracy in minutes. Anyone else who is at, uh, recording the meeting is asked to notify the chair at this time. And then uh, if all members of the board and people in the audience could turn off or silence their cell phones at this time, it would be appreciated. Our standard item zero on the agenda is to ask if any members of the public have any comments that they want to make on something that's outside of the agenda tonight. Does anybody have anything to say? All right, now we'll move directly into the agenda. The first item is the Longevity Bench Project. Lisa Bonneville, take it away. Have a microphone. There's Chief. Um, <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place this facing you um, so you can see it. This is um, part of the project. It's uh, a an enlargement of the uh, map that's in the brochure I just handed out. This brochure is a prototype, it, so I'm going to be collecting it after um, I speak. Um, because um, so it won't be circulated anywhere. Um, it will also be on a website. Um, thank you very much for letting me come and speak with you tonight. Um, I appreciate your time. This is really an inf information, sort of an infomercial, if you will. I've been speaking to towns, uh, town boards and committees to introduce them to um, this initiative that's going to be launched in the spring. It's a, a brand new initiative, the purpose of which is to encourage um, people to get out and take a walk um, and encourage them to do that at any age and at any ability. So a longevity bench um, is actually defined as, uh, as an ADA um, compliant bench that has uh, full length arms, a certain height seat, a certain depth seat, is on a flat uh, pad, bolted down, and um, it is going to be a community-based project. There are You'll see by the uh, map, the little black squares show where the benches currently are located in town. And obviously not every single bench is located, but the bench locations where there are benches are identified. And you can also see very graphically where the bench deprived areas are on these uh, major popular walking loops. So the goal of this project is to locate a bench every half mile along these popular walking loops. And of course, that goes through neighborhoods. So this is going, we're going to approach uh, property owners in town to allow a bench or uh, put a bench on their own property. Um, and, uh, and then that will be added to the map. So the map will be a um, sort of a work in progress on the website. And people can download it and print it out and take it with them. Um, I have shown here on this map 30 locations some of them are a little closer than every half mile um, that um, is, would help us achieve our goal on this project. So 30 benches um, on the major walking loops through town. Um, obviously, we are striving, as most communities are, to be a walkable town, walkable city. And um, in order for people to age in their homes, which the, the statistics are 80 to 90 percent of the baby boomers want to age in their homes, and uh, once they prepare their own home, obviously they need to get out of their home and walk around and stay healthy. So um, this is to encourage that form of uh, you know, preserving your health by walking. And, um, and it will benefit everybody, even uh, uh, sort of create some social areas where people can meet. Um, I have my neighbors on the front of this bench. This couple walks more than anyone else on my street. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'm getting um, great input from people that I've been talking to on where they would like a bench to be located. Anyone who walks in town um, can typically identify that. So um, this actually started at uh, 24 benches and it has gone to 30 because of uh, people's input for bench locations. Um, so um, the benches are, you can see the one inside. This is a bench at my office at 68th Summer Street. 
It has a little plaque on the back. Um, that will be part of what changes on this brochure and also an, uh, identifying what the pad and bench, what the dimensions will be, will also be on this brochure that, that are not there now. So um, the, uh, the steps are in progress and hopefully we will get um, registered as a nonprofit and, um, and then we'll have a launch early May. And hopefully, uh, actually, some great suggestions to have a, a little walk, walk about these loops as the uh, launch for this project, which would be fun, and have the community participate in that. So any um, input that you have, whether you, um, I mean, I'm, my contact information is, is on this, and um, this website will be set up long before the launch, uh, so people can go on and find out what this is. and. Um, I don't know, do you have uh, any questions or concerns? One question, who's responsible for the overall care of the benches? That's one of the situations that com has come up with the benches that have been donated the memorial to the benches. town, the memorial yeah. benches. Who's responsible for the care of those in the future? Yeah, these benches will be the responsibility of the property owner where the bench resides. And the setback of the lo you know, the lo setback location of the bench will be um, determined in compliance with the DPW. Mine is three feet back from the sidewalk that naturally gets cleared on Summer Street um, so that it doesn't uh, you know, get plowed off when they want to come through with that. So same thing with some of the streets that don't have sidewalks. Um, that will be uh, specific to every location. So, um, and the plaques will designate um, the, the donor of the property and also the donor of the bench. The, one of the reasons, the main reason for making this a nonprofit is some people will step forward and are, go are already doing that to place a bench on their property, but they don't also um, want to pay for the entire bench and the, and the pad. So the donations, and we're, I've already gotten one donation from a friend in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that um, <coughs> people who are excited about the project and don't have a location to put a bench can contribute to paying for the cost of adding the benches. Thank you. So at the end of the project, um, <coughs> so you're going to be, uh, are you actually going to be seeking um, uh, permanent easements from people or just informal um, uh, uh, agreement for locating the benches? Um, what would be the purpose of the easement? Um, I mean you're placing the benches on private property, right? So you're getting but the property owners are doing it at their expense on okay. their property. So, yeah. so right. the, ultimately, the property owners end up owning the benches, and they're owning the bench. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if they sell their, I mean, down the road, there'll be questions that will need to be answered. Like Got if it. they're going to sell yep. the property, and, and the new owners don't want the bench, then I think the the project will take take the bench in and right. and you know uh, put it somewhere else. Gotcha. But um, the first bench is, um, and the, DB, the Parks and Rec were very interested in this, is, a, is an aluminum bench. Um, it does not rot. Mm -hmm. It does not rust. It's guaranteed not to. So, um, so perhaps some of the memorial benches that are added around town might become uh, longevity-looking benches um, but, and, and have a, a sufficient plaque on the back as well, okay. which would be great because more people can use them. So is there any particular ask that you, your, your group has for the board or, um, this, or the town? Uh, your blessing, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I just really want you to be informed. Um, I don't want any committee thinking that um, this project is going to be coming to the town for, for any kind of funds at all. Okay. It'll be all donations community-based. As I've said before, I think it's an amazingly great initiative. And I think it's the kind of thing that we really want to inspire people with thinking about doing in our community. So thank you great. for spearheading it. That's great. Thank you. Great. Thank you for great. your time. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. We have to hang on to one of these. You can have the rest. Mm -hmm. You have to hang on to one? Yeah. Oh, for the file. Oh, I'm okay. taking okay. notes all over mine, sorry. So don't, just don't right. Okay, I won't, I won't put it in the okay. newspaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. Okay, uh, item two, uh, Harvard Dredging Advisory Committee recommendations.
Brian and Mr. Starkey. Jim, grab a microphone, and away you go. Uh, first, uh, the report actually was originally done about a year ago, and we updated it. We have the, uh, the bids from the dredging for this year to, to uh, revise the estimated numbers. Um, what I didn't realize was what I had to do to submit the report through um, official channels so it would quickly get in front of you. And before I start, I'd like to say, um, Select McKeel, it's been grand blocking horns with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss you. <laughs> I actually have a note here that I voted the same way you did on one particular article <laughs> in one town meeting. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Um, I brought, <laughs> left my computer at home in what the interest of brevity. Um, as you all know, and has been explained, this is not a natural harbor. It fills in. And it's in 1900, it was a mud flat at low water. And if it's not great, it will return to being a mud flat. We, the methodology that we use to develop the recommendations is that we have two sets of complete survey data from the harbor, one from 1996 and one from 2010, which is preliminary to the current dredging. And we put together basically three different interlocking models. I mean, first we have a hydrological model um, where we, we can estimate with a modest degree of confidence uh, what the harbor is going to look like in any given year going forward. Basically, just taking the differences between the two areas and extrapolating them forward. Um, the second is a model from CLE Engineering to estimate the cost of a particular dredging project. Uh, and that's tied into the hydrological model, so it uses the, the numbers for that particular year to plug into the formula. And the third is a long-term cash flow model uh, on what it's going to cost to maintain the harbor. Uh, just to go over things that you've heard before, the, it used to be that part of the harbor was dredged every 10 years, so every part of the harbor we would dredged every 30 years. The last dredging was in 1984, and we're way, way past uh, where we should be in terms of a dredging program. And the problem was getting state money. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1984, I was at 82, the state paid 90%. They subsequently got dropped to 75. But actually getting the money out of the state turned out to be very, very difficult. There was one dredging around, nine, nine, around 2000, scheduled for 2000, uh, that the town got the permits, the permits died because we couldn't get the funding from the state. Now, the bad news is that the harbor is way beyond where it should be for dredging. And <coughs> worse than that, the harbor, the amount of money that's being transferred from harbor fees to the dredging fund was based on the assumption the state would be paying 75 to 90 percent. And when they stopped doing that about two or three years ago, that got cranked up to 125000 per year. That is not nearly enough to make up for the amends. That is approximately what it would cost for ongoing maintenance if we started with the completely dredged harbor. So that's where we are. And the cash flow numbers are pretty ugly. And there's just, it, it'd be virtually impossible to raise more in fees high enough to cover right. everything. And so in five years of the next dredging, it takes about five years to get permits. For five years, we're not going to have nearly enough money in, in the dredging fund to cover it. And there can be some very, and that's going to go up about the same time that the, uh, the new memorial school is coming in. And it's going to be, you guys want to retire before then. Um, anyway, that's what the problem is. Um, I will leave the numbers to you. Um, the, we looked at various strategies for, for managing the harbor, and we came up with one um, which we think is, is the best and the least cost one. But it's going to involve some um, cultural changes in the harbor and probably pour by on getting some grief for, from some unhappy people. Um, the, in the past, we have dredged all of the areas of the harbor to the same depth, which is, it's called eight pay nine. They have to dredge to eight, but we'll pay them if they go to nine. And that's comfortable for any, every boat in the harbor. Um, both for economic and for logistical reasons, we can't do the harbor all at once. 
that might be the cheapest way to do it. But it's it's inconceivable. Uh, this the small areas we did took most of the of the winter, and so you can't do it all at once. So doing it in stages is is necessary. And the strategy that we came up with, and it's a departure from what we've done in the past, is to set up different parts of the harbor for different types of boats. So we'll have deep draft sailboats in one area, we'll have much shallower draft boats in another area. Uh, so area D, <coughs> we expect to have uh, mostly power boats that don't draw very much, which means we don't have to dredge that area as often, and we don't have to dredge it for another 10 years, but we can't put sailboats there. They stick in the mud. Uh, area E uh, is, will be for sailboats. Now, there's some, there's some advantages to doing this uh, in that sailboats tend to swing together at when, the, when the current changes. And they, sailboats, because they have deep keels, um, swing with the current. Uh, power boats, because they don't have keels, swing with the wind. And when they're mixed, they bang into each other and break a lot of stuff. So that's, that's the plus. Uh, economically, it's good. Uh, probably, objectively, it's, it's good. The, what's not good is that people, their marine area is, is their neighborhood. They know all the people around there, and they, and they just absolutely do not want to move. And you know, we know that, we understand that. Um, we did have a, a open meeting um, with, with the, quote, boating community. And they didn't like the idea, but once they understood the economics, um, they said, I, I get it. That, that's the way it's got to be. And frankly, there's really no alternative to it um, because logistically, we could not do the, all of the areas before mm -hmm. one of them becomes inaccessible to sailboats. So you can read the report. The numbers are in the back. Um, the, the revision, uh, the numbers that we got for the proc dredging, we thought were too good to be true. Um, they were way below the other two bids, so we noodled around and came up with kind of, for planning purposes, it's a, kind of centered in the middle of the three bids, throwing out the high one. So um, that, that's all in the report. Um, so then, in a nutshell, uh, is, is what we're doing. We have money in the capital budget, um, I understand, for the, the, uh, the next regime, which will be in about four or five years, because that's how long it takes to get the permits. Um, and that can be funded out of the dredging committee. It's the next dredging <laughs> is the one that's going to be problematic. And the big thing that we don't know and can't know and won't know is what the state will do then, because they wait to the lapse of the last minute. And if the bids have been opened and awarded, and say, no, we'll give you some money, or maybe not. That's the state of the, of the harbor. So uh, a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> so I understood uh, already, I think that I hadn't, I don't think I heard anything change from the you previous have, I plan. I ask you to speak a little bit louder so I can hear you. I don't think I heard anything different from the previous plan from last year. And, and uh, have, ha have you recently made any changes to um, the the logistical plans that were the cultural plans because the, the, the concept that you talked about about changing um, the locations of some boats to uh, make things a little bit hom more homogeneous to use the harbor more efficient efficiently we are I already knew about that one has anything changed in the approach of the recommendations from the dredging committee since last year well, I, I, I think I think that with X number of years of waiting for permits, that it's possible that some of the cultural things can evolve as boats go out and new boaters come in. And so with that as a strategy, I think it might ease the pain down the road. Okay, but the recommendations aren't changing at this point. I, I, I'm sorry, I just didn't catch your question. The recommendations are not changing from last year's plans for uh, the sequencing no, the of the dredging? No, not changed. Strategy, no. strategy hasn't changed. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> so we did get money from the state for this last dredging project? Yes. Um, quite a bit. Um, and the indications that I got from the state were that they, we were the first in their business of restarting this program and that they were going to be cycling through um, and intending to continue this program. So I don't know if we're, we're certainly not assuming we're going to get money from them, <clears throat> but I would hope that we, we could. Now, 
we've we've got some money left over from this project because it came this is the last one because it came in under budget and we're going to have want to feed that into the next project um, <clears throat> have you considered the scheduling of the next project and how it might have you has anybody talked to the state um, to find out when we ought to to optimize our chances of by and pike manchester harbor master not a resident of here uh, yes, as a matter of fact, um, I recently sent out thank you letters to um, all of the state representatives, both at the state and federal level, to say thank you. I have heard back from some of them and have been told recently and prior that when we are ready to dredge again, we must be sure to reach out to them. Uh, one of the things we did, if we all remember, is the original ask was a million dollars. Uh, we then uh, amended our ask to half a million dollars. That didn't go unnoticed at the state level. Mm -hmm. So that's all good news. Of course, we could have a different administration by then as well. Yeah. So um, we just don't know. Right now, uh, we do have verbal assurances that there could very well be more money to help us. In the plan at the state level is to uh, do 50-50. They want uh, all of the communities looking for dredging to do the studies and the permits, all of that up front as part of their cost, um, and then whatever the balance is to reach 50%, um, the town provides that and then come to the state to ask for the rest. And we're in fine position to do the studies, right? The, yeah. the big danger that we have is that we're working, we've got a five-year plan for the next dredging. The state is on a one-year plan. Mm. And the next dredging, our estimate is 2.2 is, is million. Uh, we don't have it. We've got some of it, but not nearly that much. Now, the problem that we'll be facing then yeah, it's a question, do we try and appropriate the money and not have to spend it if the state steps in, um, which I think is the, the responsible way to handle it. The problem, and it's come up before, is that if we appropriate, if we don't appropriate the money, we assume the state's going to come up, if the state doesn't come up with their money, the permits will time out in about two years and we will have blown $300,000 um, on permits and have to time out and start all over again and things can be so much worse. So we can, we can hope for the state money. We can even expect the state money, but we, we just can't plan on the assumption we're going to get it. So that's why you guys get the big bucks, so. Okay. okay. Questions? No, thank you. Thank you, Jim. To come back for four months. <laughs> Thank what you. happened to the, uh, the efforts to regionalize dredging equipment? So uh, over the course of the winter, I uh, went to Wells, Maine with uh, Representative Hill and Leonard, I forget his last name, from uh, Merrimack Valley. Uh, Wells did that. They purchased a dredging machine uh, to do some very minor dredging, but then they also partnered with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute uh, to do studies for uh, wells about the most efficient way to um, dredge and whether or not buying larger equipment would be a good idea. So Representative Hill and the gentleman from Merrimack Valley have already done a lot of legwork on that, reached out to Woods Hole, partnering with them, and fairly shortly we're going to see um, some outreach to North Shore communities that would benefit from a group um, purchase of dredging equipment, uh, benefit from permits that would be more of a blanket permit uh, for them to do dredging, with the idea being that if we can bring costs down for a lot of these communities, Essex, Plum Island, and Newburyport, that, that would benefit from this type of sand removal. Um, that would leave more money for communities like ours. So I will actively be promoting the North Shore effort to 
to regionalize and purchase equipment equipment wasn't to that, do dredging. Wasn't that part of the state's strategy was to replicate what took place on the Cape with that consortium? So the Cape is one of the models, uh, Wells, Maine is, but there hadn't been a lot of figuring out how to do that yet. The Cape and Islands harbor masters and communities are way out in front on a lot of this stuff. They have a really good handle on it. They've done good work. Uh, and now it's up to the rest of the state to, to catch up and, and look at what they've done and take advantage of, of that model. And, and it's happening. That's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty. <laughs> You're, you were serious? No, no, I get it, because Paul voted. Yeah. I was sitting in between the two. <laughs> Paul Barkley voted the note on the board. <coughs> <coughs> 2013 town meeting. Corey and I are remaining ever vigilant. Paul voted and passed it across. <laughs> I meant that. Okay. I wasn't kidding when I said I had that. I <laughs> said Framed. It's <laughs> I have all kinds of them here. Mr. Moderator. Ms. Center. We have a few minutes before seven, so I'm going to uh, take correspondence. We have <coughs> uh, had a letter from the <coughs> Uh, chair of the Manchester Essex Rotary regarding um, HDC hearings um, uh, and I believe at this point the offer of putting the sign on the um, town the town the informational sign on the town common has been withdrawn um, so we have uh, still got some work to do on the um, communications and their interactions there. Um, Do you know if the rotary is going to consider any other locations or have you talked to? I've not talked to them. I, no, I haven't followed up. But, um, my, my sense was they were not that interested in other locations. Mm. Okay. I think they were more curious. Mm. Sure. The Rotary decided that this year they would go to Essex and do something there. Okay. Since Essex was apparently more interested than the HTC was. Okay. All right. Uh, Just one question: Is this sound like? Is this something where um, we need to have someone from K and P talk to the HDC about the open meeting law and the way that uh, their their public hearings are run? Because I um, the the email violation, say at the last meeting, and then this letter just does not paint a pretty picture of uh, the way that applicants are treated and the way information is spread uh, following the meetings. I think the uh, first step would probably be for uh, us to talk to the, have a sit down with the chair and uh, whoever from the board wants to be at that, um, I am willing to do that. And if anybody else wants to be involved in that, raise your hand. Well, it yeah. would depend on when it is. All right. I'll send out some email about when uh, when we might set up a meeting. It's probably not going to be in um, the February or the early part of March. Um, the HDC chair is out quite a bit right now. All right. Shall we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, 7 o'clock. Uh, on our agenda for 7 is uh, town meeting budget discussion. Um, we have four items on here. One's going to be the re review of the draft warrant. One's going to be the town budget. 
Uh, one's going to be fire department capital requests, and one's going to be the marijuana articles. Now, Tom uh, has to leave by 7.30. So what I said that I would do is I would move the marijuana articles up to discussion to the front of this list. That's what we're going to do now. Um, fire chief had to go out. He's going to come back later, so we'll be moving the capital, fire department capital requests down, and uh, then we will proceed. And um, I think... We're, we also have to, in our schedule at some point going over and actually voting on the, the town budget. Mm -hmm. I think what I would like to do, if it's okay with everybody, is on the next meeting on Monday, which I think we have to do, um, we'll go through and, and do our votes on the particular uh, department budgets <coughs> then, because Tom's going to be out for that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sound all right? Sounds good. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. All right, so let's uh, uh, go with the uh, marijuana articles discussion. Tom, would you start up, please? Well, as you know, we've been spending some time uh, with some listening sessions in the neighbors, in the neighborhood. We've also had some people from the listening group from the planning board and the um, board of health um, attend the Rockport public hearings on what they were thinking of been following what's going on in Gloucester and also attending the, the uh, Cannabis Control Commission listening sessions over in Danvers uh, last Wednesday. Um, we have three articles, or the potential of three articles. One article, which is the citizen petition article, which is for a ban in, uh, in the entire town for all recreational marijuana facilities. A second potential article, which we've got gotten some feedback from back from uh, K and P um, on a general bylaw for a ban, and then a third potential article, which uh, would be for um, limiting the uh, recreational marijuana or the non-medical marijuana in the same way that we've regulated. Um, the medical marijuana by zoning. And um, when Greg and I first looked at this at the end of last week, we thought it might be rather difficult, but in Greg's communication with, uh, talk to Jonathan, Greg, at, yes. at KMP, he thought that it was fairly easy to amend our uh, medical marijuana bylaw to include non-medical marijuana. So... Um, the decisions that, or just to open this up, we want to think a little bit about would you want to have that type of, of uh, zoning bylaw? Um, would you like to limit it and have that type of facility, the non-medical or the recreational marijuana in the limited commercial district? Um, do you want to regulate the, the type of uh, facilities that there are up there to a retail shop only to a cultivator only um, in other words do you want to put a limitation that way and what is the review process that we'd use but the review process if we used a uh, amendment to the present medical marijuana the review process is pretty much well detailed out in the medical marijuana bylaw. <clears throat> Greg, is there anything that I've missed in that? No, just to, just to um, further clarify that, that options one and two definitely require a vote by ballot. Um, the third option, if you were to limit it, but, but allow all the, the uses that the state allows, that would not require a ballot vote. But if you did want to limit it to only certain types of marijuana uses, then that would trigger a ballot for even option three. Okay. Um, and the only other thing that I saw in terms of, I mean, I, I just done a couple readings through of the um, medical marijuana treatment centers or dispensaries is the one thing that we did not put in there before is uh, it says no medical marijuana treatment center shall be located within 300 feet of a residential zoning district or within 500 feet of any lot containing a school child care facility or playground and we might want to add camp to that as the 
the MAC, the Manchester Athletic Club, runs summer camps. Well, um, and they have a child care yep. on site too, yep. so it may, I mean, that may be covered in there with okay. that child care note. Um, so a couple of questions. One, you know, one's a pur purely procedural. If we want to get the 2% tax, 3% um, tax yeah, actually, yeah. Um, do can we fold that into um, the edit to the um, mar uh, medical marijuana bylaw that we have, the zoning bylaw, or do we have to do an additional article? So that's probably cleanest as a separate article to adopt so that the local option. Four. Correct. Yeah. Or we could delay that one and put it on later, because that can be done retroactively, right? Well, it can be. Um, not retroactively, well, it, it, but it would be done, it can be done at any time and it would apply to any existing right. establishment. Right. Um, four is probably a bit much. <clears throat> uh, although, uh, Mr. Wilson, if you'd be <clears throat> so kind as to render your opinion. <clears throat> Alan Wilson, Five Spy Rock Hill. I, I, despite my um, confidence at the last time we talked about this, <laughs> of handling three at once, I've, I've begun to have some doubts about that. I still think it's the right thing to do because I think if you have three options on the table, people will want to discuss comparisons of them, and it only makes sense to let them do that. Um, it may get a little messy, um, particularly if we have amendments from the floor mm -hmm. to whatever article happens to be under discussion. Um, four will make it worse, but, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not sure, though, that if, if, if the fourth one is limited simply to uh, accepting the tax, that we'd need to discuss that along with the others. It seems like that could be standalone. Mm -hmm. It could be standalone. Yeah. I mean, it, Obviously, they're connected in that, in that the ability to adopt the tax may influence people's mm -hmm. desire to allow mm -hmm. something, but I'm not sure that the, there's the same uh, compelling argument for discussing them together. Right. And the, the other thing is that this uh, local option tax on any taxes only, um, only works with marijuana retailers. No other nothing else is taxed nothing else has the option for local option tax so depending on the outcome of the first three you might never get right. to that four. is correct yes so it would just be saying the municipality will accept general law chapter 64 in section <coughs> three by a vote of its legislative body um, it's benign either way yeah. one one caution i would express about the idea of regulating recreational marijuana in the limited commercial district by amending the existing medical marijuana provision is that you might open up the possibility of amendments from the floor addressing changes to the medical marijuana, mm. <clears throat> which if you did it as a separate standalone section wouldn't be possible. Why, why is it difficult to keep this, to actually have this as a separate um, item. I mean, that seemed to me like the language that uh, came out of um, uh, KMP on that was pretty straightforward. Why was it difficult for us to do it separately from the medical marijuana zoning bylaw? Well, you're just going to repeat a lot of what's in the medical. Okay, so not difficult. You, it's just not difficult. It's just verbose. It's just verbose. Yes. Can you? Can could you? Eliminate some of the uh, verbosity by simply incorporating those sections by reference in a new section. That, that certainly seems like a logical way to go. I don't know if how they would feel about that, but we could certainly ask. Comments and thoughts. Yeah, I mean the the present um, medical marijuana treatment centers or registered marijuana dispensaries six point nineteen is about four full pages long, just to, so you'd be adding basically probably another four full pages to, you know, would it be 
6.21 or something, because 6.20 is, is uh, 6.20.1 is the temporary moratorium. I'm, I honestly, I don't feel like that sways me one way or the other. Um, adding adding uh, some verbosity to our bylaws is not necessarily um, a no, showstopper. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you might not have to. You might have one sentence that says mm -hmm. this new section 22 or whatever it would be numbered incorporates by reference sections X, Y, Z. 6.19.1, 6.19.2. Yeah. Comments? In fact, it's liable to be a little longer than four pages because the definitions portion in the medical marijuana is less than a page. And the definition section in the non-medical marijuana, just given the eight or nine different types of marijuana, recreational or non-medical marijuana facilities that could be opened um, is going to go a, a page plus without a doubt. Can I? Oh, I mean, I think a lot of that would be boilerplate, Mr. Chairman, um, and you could ask the people who are dealing with marijuana bylaws from KP Law to you know, I'd, turn that right out, I think. I, to be honest, I, th I think that uh, our discussion really, about, uh, I don't think we should be spending time on the length of a uh, number of pages that we, we might or might not be putting into the um, bylaws. I think we should focus on the actual issues here. Well, that's fine. I just was just <coughs> mentioning. Um, so, uh, comments and thoughts. So my question is, based on what we're talking about now with these three options and possibly a fourth with the 30% tax piece, does that cover us in the scenarios that we're concerned about in reaction to what the state law is going to do when it takes place and how it works? Do you know what I mean? I mean, is it our do, best do, do, does it does it cover us completely? Um, I still think the Cannabis Control Commission is yeah. still, after taking a week and a half worth of open session and and listening sessions, they're not going to come out with their final set of regulations until March fifteenth, mm -hmm. which will be after we have to have everything, have the warrant closed. Um, Which would open the door for amendments, mm -hmm. yeah. if necessary. Yeah, and this, between Speaker DeLeo and Governor Baker and Attorney General Healy, there seems to be some, you know, slow down the fire a little, <laughs> you know, just, you know, kind of, you know, try to get the basics in line before you start to deal with, you know, the social consumption cafes and marijuana and movie theaters and, and delivery services and all those other things. Um, yeah. It, I'm, so I still think the foundational question is the ban. I mean, that's sort of one of the many here is whether or not that sort of become because that ticks off. If there's a vote to ban and then a vote by ballot to ban, then we have our answer. Correct. When that, if that doesn't happen, the backup is limited commercial district, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. So um, it seems to me that this town meeting focus on that with what the other possibilities could be would be the discussion point. But when does the clock run out for us, or we don't know that yet in terms of this? Or December 31st, our moratorium runs out, or either December 31st or when we put other regulations regulating non-medical marijuana in place. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't actually, um, uh, the clock doesn't run out, and we're not um, dead in the water at that point. It just means that we are, if we don't have any regulations in place as of that date, then um, somebody who came in and wanted to establish um, 
uh, store could do so, and we would not be able to restrict them. Well, yeah, we wouldn't so, have anything in place. So realistically, if it played out that we dealt with the ban in this town meeting, if we're coming back to town meeting in the fall, I'm not saying we should do this, but if we had to, we could have another town meeting vote prior to that December 31st mm -hmm. date. So we would have an opportunity to do something at a threshold planning point if we needed to. You do have two town meeting, you have two town meeting town and election cycles to, to use, correct? Has, has KMP told us whether we could extend the moratorium? The last thing I saw was that the Attorney General was only accepting moratoriums going up to December 31st, 2018. I think she was pretty clear on that three or four months ago, too, yeah. as a means to get cities and towns moving. Yeah. I would think there'd be some room, though, if the Cannabis Control Commission doesn't quite have their ducks in a row there might be some room on that. you can't guarantee that but I would think there might be some room. whatever might be yeah can't guarantee it and besides well um, it's a little bit moot with the citizens petition in there right I mean <clears throat> uh, it's it's going to get voted on already by us so we can't uh, we can't put forth a proposal to <clears throat> try to extend the moratorium right well, you could at the special, was, was my thought. We could if... If, um, we thought, if we thought it would fly. Right. Yeah, or, and, or, but, but only reasonably if, um, if the uh, citizen's petition article uh, on the warrant now failed. Right? So <coughs> um, uh, if we were going to do something along those lines, we wouldn't put anything on the warrant now, and we would wait to see what the final disposition from the state was and then put things on the warrant and the special that's how we would approach that well, but that's not the situation we're in no my my question really was if we got to the fall special with nothing yet in place what would be our options then yeah <clears throat> i mean i'm thinking that you'd look and see what um see the the closeness of the vote in the election if so, you know if and uh, find out that you know is there over, is there a possibility for that two thirds to um, vote it a, vote the the ban and then get the majority at the election. Um, I mean, it's it's none of us have a crystal ball to try to figure out what's what's going to happen. Um, be a lot easier to do that on April third. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's going to be a long discussion already, right? No matter what. Yeah. So, I, honestly, I still think we should just put all three on. And uh, since we have the one on, we should just put all three on and have the discussion. And I think we should have the discussion with all the options on the table because otherwise we're tilting it a little bit one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very close vote originally. So uh, I would, um, I think that that's uh, the long path uh, for a longer discussion, but we have a relatively short warrant and it's not um, otherwise particularly complicated. So I think it's. So, so you would say don't, don't even talk about the 3% local option tax, wait until what ha see yeah. what happens and yeah. do that in in, in yep. uh, October. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, the very worst possible case is that somebody goes woohoo and immediately puts an it's, and the two things go down. The the restriction of the LCD goes in. Somebody comes in, puts in a store, and we lose three months of a three percent tax. Right. That's the very worst thing that could happen to us if we didn't put the fourth thing in now. Well. If anyone wanted to come in, they would have to um, work yeah, it's, work it's, with it's the board just, it's, on, it's on a host third. community agreement, and that host community agreement would have a certain amount of money involved in it, and that money would come for three years. And I, I, was, I don't know; I'm not a lawyer, but maybe you could say that. Uh, I mean, it will it will take them 
more than just a few months to get through a site plan review and a special permit um, through uh, the planning board. Yeah, I didn't think it was a very realistic scenario, is my point. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I, I, I agree with you, and if, if we feel that we could ask the people from KP Law to uh, um, draw up a, a parallel, as I was saying, like a parallel article on non-medical slash recreational marijuana using <coughs> much of the information that's in the medical marijuana bylaw in 6.19, well, what's the what's the preference? Well, first of all, do other mem folks on the board agree to this this idea? What's the preferences here? Which idea would I of putting all put three, three on articles on and, and discussing them? I agree, I agree with the leaving the three percent off. Okay. So, uh, I think the I, I'm interested in. The integrity or the strength of the citizen petition um, on its own, but um, I mean, I could, I, I could certainly sway. I didn't understand that. I think I've been consistent from going back to some of the earliest discussions that I, I'm interested in it being a petition coming from residents specifically as to what the town should do and. I'm happy to sponsor a petition if there's an absence of a citizen petition, but I'm interested in how much, how encompassing the citizen petition can be as opposed to anything that we might propose. I still don't understand. Um, uh, the citizen petition is for a zoning bylaw for a complete ban of all non-medical slash recreational marijuana facilities. So when you're saying you're, you're interested in uh, how encompassing it is, what specifically do you mean? Uh, I, I think that's as, I think as encompassing as it can be. And so in terms of adding more onto it, I, I, you know, I don't know if we need to add more than that, but that's just, <coughs> well, so. <clears throat> So technically, you can't add to it as a as an article, right. as a warrant. You could move to amend, um, but that's a different process. Well, there's not much to amend in that. I mean, <clears throat> it, it falls under zoning bylaw, and you can't. Um, I don't think. So the pro the the proposals were a general bylaw change um, to <clears throat> ban uh, the ones that we were proposing to potentially add uh, general bylaw to. Um, change to ban uh, any uh, recreational facilities in town and a, um, a zoning bylaw to uh, limit um, uh, to the limited commercial district <coughs> any recreational facilities. Those are the two that we we're uh, proposing to add. And <coughs> the reason for adding, no, actually, the yeah, the, so the, actually now I'm thinking about it, the, the one, the zoning, the change to the zoning bylaw to restrict it to limited commercial district, that would be two thirds as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So actually, um, the, the reason we had originally talked about, there were two reasons we talked about putting the ban on, um, the general bylaw change. One was um, there were some who were hoping for it as a backup um, in case the zoning bylaw vote failed. But you had, uh, when at the last meeting we had about this, um, we talked about the possibility that it would take two thirds to um, pass that one um, versus a simple majority to pass limiting it to the commercial district. I thought that was your concern. No, 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 no. no. It was it was that um, the original vote to legalize was closely split. The distinction between the general bylaw and the, and the zoning bylaw ban is that they would both do the same thing, but what the, the general bylaw ban would require only a simple majority. The, the reason I think the petitioners opted for the zoning bylaw ban is because 
that is the one that the Attorney General has specifically expressed advance approval for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And has been silent on the efficacy of the general bylaw. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there is a, a chance, a possibly significant one, to the, that the uh, Attorney General will come back and say no to the general. Um, <clears throat> so anyway. So the question really boils down to is it, is it primarily a regulation of land use or is it primarily an exercise of the town's police power? And I'm, I'm not sure how the Attorney General would come up with that myself. Okay. So, okay. And KP does in their, in their memo suggest that there's no harm in adopting both. Uh, yeah, that was the belt and suspenders yeah. comment yeah. that if, KP made. Yeah, if the, if the objective was to um, ban, yes. Uh, both of those have to go on. Uh, the, the both, if, if, we, if we vote for the general bylaw, uh, bylaw and the zoning bylaw, both of those have to go on the ballot, right? I believe, yeah. I believe a zoning bylaw amendment limiting it to the limited commercial district is not as a standalone provision and not as an amendment to the medical general provision would also have to go on the ballot. Is that right? No. I don't think no. so. No. Because it's allowing it. Oh, that's right. okay. So as long as you're not restricting As long as you don't restrict it in any shape and form besides location. Yeah. Um, so those are the options, and uh, where, what, what do you, any comments? Uh, I'm concerned about us pushing something that is going to fly in conflict with might shake out from the attorney general or you know any overreach of our authority. Well, the, uh, the only thing that would happen was they would say, no, you can't have that. They would strike it. it would, wouldn't be allowed, we wouldn't be allowed to put it into the bylaw. Okay. Yeah, we could, we could pass it and then send it to the Attorney General, and the Attorney General has 90 days to get back to us to say that's accepted or not accepted. Mr. Chairman, I would, I would think that it would be best for us to keep the three on the on the warrant. We we have the citizen petition, we put the general, and then we put the new um, non medical slash recreational marijuana bylaw, limiting it in the limited commercial district, parallel to the uh, the medical marijuana facilities. Is there a preference for people about, uh, well, first of all, is that general idea um, uh, something that everybody is interested I don't, in? I don't know if there's much more we could do with it. Okay. But right now, you know, I mean, that's, My yeah. point is right. we'll have an opportunity to pass over if, in fact, the force yep. prevails and we can have it. We're trying to hedge our bets relative to what possibility we could build as some structure around this yeah. when we don't have a lot of information. So I, I'm more curious as to what would be the downside. I would, personally, I would love just to have the first article to be wanted or not, and then have the ability to go back and sort through <clears throat> based on information that we get from the Cannabis Control Commission and the input from our community of what Plan B would be. But I also get the fact that we've got other things happening in a fall special that would complicate this matter as well. So. Um, you know, I, I don't think it hurts to have the conversation. I think we need to be very um, succinct about it and also have the ability to pull back on these if we don't feel we need them based on future information. And if we have to modify and change, we have the ability to do that through amendments. It could get very complicated. That's my only worry. I just would love to keep it as simple. It'd be nice if it was just a yes or a no. You know, I mean, that, that to me would be. Yeah. And, why, and why can't, why can't the citizen petition be coached to encompass these things so that it comes in a single citizen petition as opposed to three different measures? And I guess I'm not understanding that part. Well, what the law says is that the board is required to include in the warrant the subject matter of a citizen's petition. The statute doesn't actually say you have to incorporate it word by word, but that 
has always been the practice in Manchester right. and most other, I think all of the towns that I'm aware of. Yeah, that's not a precedent I really want to change. Um, you have to go. Sorry. <coughs> uh, I, I, I think, you, I think you'd, you'd be on thin ice to do that. Right. I, Particularly I, on a controversial I, subject. Mm -hmm. Wasn't. Uh, I don't think we were proposing that. I hope we weren't. Um, uh, I'm still not sure uh, what the board really wants to do here. Um, um, what was? The, <laughs> I, I, I think the fact that this is seemingly uh, somewhat inconclusive a discussion I, I fear what is going to happen in a town meeting when we try to introduce all these measures trust me <laughs> <laughs> no I'm not commenting on your no. capability I'm, I'm commenting on a on a very large audience's ability to act in a specified amount of time with clarity yeah so, well, so you're, you're going from least, most restrictive to less restrictive. Right. So you're starting off with the most ironclad ban, which is the citizen petition. If that passes, I think you pass over well, sure, right. options two and three. If, if option one fails to get a two-thirds, then you say, okay, folks, the next lower down in terms of restriction and ironcladness, in terms of the eyes of the law, is to in initiate a ban by a general bylaw. That's a majority vote, yay or nay. If that fails, you would move to, all right, then what about sentiment for, or feelings or agreement of limiting it to the LCD? So I think you walk people through. I, th I think you do, but I'm not sure I agree that you would want to pass over the general bylaw ban, even well, if the zoning bylaw ban were passed. I mean, I, yeah. I, I could make a similar argument for saying that we should just do all three, um, because the first two of those are going to go to the ballot, and if they um, don't pass, but you had passed the um, restriction of the limited commercial district, you still have the control that you want to exercise. What do you do if you have two bylaws on the books? One, <coughs> one that's a ban and one that allows it. So I think you would have to say in your motion of, a, of approving the, the, the limitation to LCD that it's contingent on numbers one and two failing. I don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> We'd have to ask KP that if you can have a contingent approval like that. I think, I think, it, I think you could do that probably, but I'd defer to KP on it. Yeah. So is the, is the, uh, I, I'm trying to get a sense for, I'm, I'm feeling some uh, lack of clarity from both of you about what you um, would like to see happen at town meeting. Is, is, is your, are you saying that you'd rather have just one thing up there and have one discussion at a time or uh, can you dig into this a little bit deeper? I mean, if that's an executable strategy, I think that's that's fine to go the way that it's just being presented. I, I just feel like we're threading uh, a particularly small needle on a on a on an extremely critical issue. I think we're enhancing our. <laughs> if if option A fails, if the zoning ban fails, and we go to the general bylaw and it passes, I think we're enhancing our chances that the AG will deny it because it'll right. be seen as right. a clear end run around the zoning two-thirds requirement. But we can roll that dice. Nothing says that we can't. I just want to go in with our eyes open. Mm -hmm. uh, with, without, without expressing an opinion on the merits of either one, because I can't do that, um, what do you have to lose? Right. I agree with that. I agree with that. 
my, my general feeling, like I said before, it's not, it's about hedging our bets. It's about making it as least complicated as right. possible, right. but also giving enough room for the citizens to have a good value discussion around it to get some guidance on what they want to do right. and how we want to proceed. Right. Again, personally, I would rather not have to have them all in one felt swoop, but understanding the timing and what we're coming up with and all the other things that are going on, I think this is the only strategy that we can have right now. Now, that may change in a month, and we have the opportunity to amend and think about it. So that's why I'm okay with saying for now, I'm okay with moving ahead with this, but if we get new information in three weeks that says something else, we've got to have the flexibility to be able to make uh, changes on it. So that's all. It's not a fun topic. <laughs> well, and the vote to legalize it was so yeah. close that it warrants the ability to give people the time to discuss it yeah. at town meeting. And if the three articles are the pieces that allow people the chance to talk about it, that that's where I'm at. Yeah. So I think we're there, there's, there was no real distinction between that legalizing vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think we've talked. No, actually, you know what? Um, on this particular discussion, this isn't actually us discussing what to lay out for the, the warrant. So I'm going to actually not take. Um, question about the procedure, not necessarily the. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sue Sentner, 72 School Street. In listening to um, the discussion about the order and the options, just a procedural question, if the general bylaw, if for instance the first article pe citizens petition should not pass, general bylaw should pass, what if, it's kind of a what if question, um, down the line the AG looks at the general bylaw situation and decides not to approve. Mm. If the town has voted um, a certain way with regard to the general bylaw, does the attorney general's decision about it make a difference? Is, or would it sort of nullify it? Yes, that would yes, just be nullifies. The attorney, the attorney general rules that the bylaw is not um, uh, consistent with state law, they can uh, strike it. So would that leave, where would that leave the town if it was after It's as if the vote didn't happen. I'm sorry? It is as if the thing was not on the warrant at all. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. So to that end, if, it, if the Attorney General's office took that full 90 days to decertify that vote, where do we sit to deal with it in the fall? We'd be right up against the fall town meeting just about. Uh, well, no, you'd have, they you'd finished have to that by July, that wouldn't July, be a problem. Yeah. August. If she took till the middle of August to de possibly decertify yeah. the vote. There would be going, sufficient time there, yeah. there would be. still okay. to put it on to do a, a limited version okay. at, at the special. November. Okay. Yes. Not for uh, the special well, election. For, um, for the fall special town meeting, Which October. October. No, there is time for October. We'd be, yeah, for, there would be. We'd be close. Be close, but there's enough time. Okay. But it, it also suggests that you might not want to pass over the second yes. zoning provision, the, the limitation right. to the right. right. commercial That's, district. That if, speaks if to the general bylaw ban passed. Right. 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 All right. That makes um, sense. I think we can sort out the rest of the logistics on this um, uh, at the next meeting. Is uh, um, uh, with one question uh, that I want to resolve now. There's the question of the third uh, uh, item being merged in with the medical or um, being a standalone um, bylaw. Does anybody have a preference? You have a so recommendation? Stick with putting it in the medical? I, I'd lean towards that, but I will have KP draw up both and you can take a look at them. Fine. See Thank which you. one you like. Let's and just on. use the second one as a reference point versus re, but yeah, right. I, I think, yeah, okay, that's good. All righty, uh, draft warrant, can review just, of the draft just warrant. Just make one last comment on that. Yes. I, I do think there is a possibility of 
further complicating the discussion on town meeting floor if you do that, if you do what Greg suggested, because it opens the door to amendments to the medical marijuana provision that we already have. Probably yeah. unlikely. What's that? Probably mm -hmm. unlikely that anyone yeah. would want to do that. But I prefer not to have to rule from the floor on it. Yeah, I, I understand. Mostly I agree to have us go ahead and have K&P write up two of them is because we already spent 40 minutes on this tonight and we got to cover other things. And I figure if we make the last decision on next Monday, that'll be okay. Uh, draft warrant. Um, Greg, you want to run through this quickly? Sure. So um, your, your standard boilerplates, <laughs> number one, receive in the place on file the annual reports. Number two is the non-salaries for all your work. And three is the budget for the um, uh, North Shore Agriculture and Technical School District. Do we have a number? We do. <laughs> Um, and it has increased significantly. Oh. Uh, it's a 42% increase. Uh -huh. Whoa. Why? Because we have a 50% increase in enrollment. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. We went over our 5% five percent. Five. So, so we've had four, we now have six. Oh. So we had that five added, slots. That basically adds 15,000 per student that we add. Yep. So that added $30,000. Mm -hmm. So we're at around 100 and, uh, no, we're just under 100. <clears throat> I think. I think. I, ha I don't have the. I have the number. I don't have it. I have to look it up. Well, it is a plus for those students. Yep. It's a great school. So Article Four is the town um, operating budget. Article Five is the capital budget. Article Six um, would be to fund. Um, through a capital exclusion, um, assuming you are not going forward with the uh, ambulance for uh, 19, then we would, I would recommend putting dollars in for the uh, culvert, the, the Central Street Dam and culvert. So um, <clears throat> this money would be in addition to the um, uh, grant that we got from the state? Correct, correct. And the grant was in the amount of four, 500, five, full 500. <clears throat> yes. um, so the total cost of that project is probably going to be north of a million. Yeah. 1.5 uh, was the original guess in that ballpark. Yeah, I'm hoping it comes a little less than that, but yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So I was envisioning it if, if we will continue to seek other funding sources, but right. um, I think we also way. need to pursue mm. adding over multiple years our own yep. sources of funding. Yep. There's going to take more than just the, there's, there's going to be a considerable amount of design. We're not anticipating completing that project by the end of the next fiscal year. Correct. Right? Correct. Mm. So I'm happy if we have a final design approved in a year from now. <laughs> okay. Article 7 is the school district budget. Article 8 would be the community preservation projects. Which is listed as 10. Yes, I see that. <laughs> uh, it's all right, it's even better. I see that. Yeah. Not sure how I skipped from 7 to 10, but anyways. Um, <clears throat> so there are um, uh, probably just four projects. There'd be the uh, admin money, administrative money. There'd be uh, an addition to the Chowder House, the 23,000. There's uh, plantings at, uh, I'm forgetting what I'm sorry. The plantings at uh, Mass, Masconoma Park. Um, one that's missing is um, uh, continued uh, deed research on lands, or property owners unknown. When and are we getting the finals on those? I'm sorry? When are we getting the finals on those? Yeah, I should have those um, tomorrow. Okay. And then the affordable housing at 150,000, but not administrative expenses for the for for affordable housing that's transfer into the trust right correct yes yeah. okay so what number am I on? nine then is um, 
uh, funding the OPEB trust. Tomorrow, Dan uh, Sherman's going to be at uh, in to discuss. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dan Sherman will be at the FinCom meeting to review the actuarial study and updating that. Has his opinion changed much from last year? Uh, no, we're 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 doing we're ahead of schedule. Actually, um, our health insurance increase this year will help because it's only a two and a half percent increase. So that's. Um, so that last is. year we were down to a uh, sixteen-year uh, runway for getting to where we needed to be as opposed to the original 30, right? Correct. Yeah. Assuming the 8% yep. return. Okay. Um, so then I think I'm now at, now at 10. <laughs> okay. uh, the next one is a, a new provision. So the, the opinion from DOR has changed a bit. We've always treated the monies from cable as a gift account. And, and therefore, you would be able to authorize expenditure from that gift, gift account. Um, DOR is strongly urging communities not to treat it that way anymore and to set it up as a, a <coughs> special fund that voters approve. Um, in thinking about this a little further, I think it makes sense to add a, an additional clause here and furthermore to appropriate mm -hmm. um, funds for the fiber loop. For this year. For this year. And I will have a number for that. It's, I want to say it's 130000 but it's all coming from the fund. Mm -hmm. And to put it into this fund. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. So we'd be asking the voters to authorize the establishment of the fund and then to authorize the authorize expenditure the of this first expenditure from the fund. So... Um, uh, would they be authorizing putting the money into the account and also authorizing the expenditure? Correct. Mm -hmm. In this article, so this right. would be like so three little things. The way it's to established, it's it's the funds are automatically deposited into it. Once you establish the fund, then it's all auto, funds automatically go into that fund. Okay. The dollars automatically go into that fund. So we're asking them to create the fund, which will automatically have the dollars go into it, and then you're asking the expenditure. Right of the dollars for the fiber loop project. So, okay. Um, okay, um, tentatively I say yes and move on. Um, I may come back to that concept. So then the next article is um, the annual appropriation of the revolving fund limit for the park and rec programming funds. So fees that are collected from the programs go into the account and they automatically roll out and pay for the expenditures of those programs. So we increase that limit a little bit each year. A little bit, you know, two and a half percent a year. Um. Uh, I'm sorry, where's our operating budget? Number four. It's very... Oh, yes. uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a very plain vanilla um, looking so article. The, the fiber loop ordinarily would be... Wouldn't, wouldn't we have that as a capital project? Which one now? The fiber loop. Well, if we were not using the special funds, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, right. Well, except we specify the funding source. No, you have to have a separate vote for the special fund. Is that the right. point? Okay. Right, that's the point. All right, I'm yep. good. Never mind. Yep. Move on. Exactly. Um, so down to where am I, 14, which is now 12 which is the um, CONCOM proposal for the unspoiled wetland scenery protection. They, they, in their suggested article wording, had put in um, basically four, four arguments for why to do it. 
And I thought that that crossed the line as to advocacy rather than just pure information. Yeah, no. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I did take that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you're comfortable with that, I, I think that's yeah. a, they obviously can make that case from the yes, floor. absolutely. Right. But it shouldn't be in the bylaw, um, specifically. <clears throat> and while I'm talking about the Conservation Commission, they also requested um, that three parcels, three additional parcels be placed on this year's warrant for being placed under their jurisdiction. Um, my sense is that the timing is too late for that <laughs> and that we really needed more lead time. Well, we needed more lead time. And so these are the same three properties that they put on originally um, that they withdrew uh, last spring, spring, right? Correct. And they withdrew them because we had asked, we wanted them to be reviewed. Correct. Um, and basically everybody wanted them reviewed more thoroughly. That review process happened, and then at the fall town meeting, a different set of properties was brought forth, and it was explained to the voters by me <coughs> that this was in fact the replacement for the three properties that we discussed earlier, and after that review process, this was the set of properties we were considering. So um, I was surprised when these original three properties came back up, um, and uh, I, I it, uh, it's it's kind of baffling to me, actually, that they would um, be brought forward. Um, uh, and yes, it's in my opinion, it's way too late to be bringing that in um, for um, discussion on today on this warrant article, and um, there'd have to be a, a really strong justification for putting it in in the fall, in my opinion. So the newly numbered uh, 13, 14, 15 would be the three marijuana articles. Okay. And then uh, 18, which is now 16, <laughs> becomes the uh, citizen petition regarding the Flowers for Freedom money. And again, I think you're advocacy here is for um, setting up a donation account? Yes. And then the last two, um, again, standard one is to um, to transfer uh, into the stabilization account, $100,000. And then the last one would to take any, um, any fund balance monies to reduce uh, the tax rate if, if needed or not. Okay, everybody good with the ordering on these items? Questions or requests? Uh, Alan, any comments? On the order? Yep. No, I think this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm changing questions. We have him on there? Yeah. Oh, yes, right. Oh, yeah. Honorary selectman, Paul Burke. Arthur, once again. Sorry, Roger. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, I'm Arthur. Too. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where I go. Back to signing, you know, Paul. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it on checks, too. Yeah, right. So we will um, get this polished up. Um, and my assumption is you will meet a week from yesterday. Yes. Yes. Special meeting on the 26th to, yeah. to finalize this. Is yeah. that the game? You game have plan? all the numbers done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Would you like me to come back? Would you like me to come back for that? Um, only if you want to. Um, let's leave it this way. Uh, we sh we'll have the final draft of it, and if anything is going to change significantly, then that'll be an indication about whether or not. Oh, actually. Uh, there's actually a possibility that we'll get into some discussion and change our minds about something, isn't there? Uh, you should come. Happy to do it. Um, and speaking of changing your mind, I, I think I'm going to withdraw my previous comment about the vehicle for amending the, the limited commercial district. I think I would not have a problem if you did it that way, putting new, re new recreational marijuana provisions in in ruling that any proposed amendments to the medical marijuana provisions were outside the scope. We're on, on an out of order. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. if you want to do it that way, it's okay. Okay. 
Actually, can I have you just take a quick look at um, the article concerning the cable money in the fund? Yeah. So um, highlighted is, is a quote from the statute that, that spells out the various uses of that money. That's a little more verbose than necessary, but it, it, it spells it out. A bit about including but not limited to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, but not limited to one, two, and three. Or, as, as the note on the side indicates, alternatively, you could just say the monies in the fund shall be appropriated for the purposes identified in the, in the general law. I don't know if you have a preference one way or the other. Uh, I don't know. Um, you can make a final decision next week. <laughs> yeah. Actually, to be honest, I'm going to have to go and review the provisions of 53F and three quarters. And three quarters. So the language in the article as it stands now is a direct quote is, from... Is what's in that. ...from the law. Right. It is currently, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, I guess I'm fine either way. Um, I, I tend to lean towards referencing the general law. Um, this is actually currently a little bit more free if the general law changes. That's what I like to reference the general law, typically. That's what I do only because if it does shift, you've got your coverage. Right. Right. But we can we can make that. We can discuss Monday, it. Right? Yeah. Give us a little bit of time to ponder it. Okay. Uh <clears throat> edit on the warrant? Yes. Okay. So uh town budget. Um outside so so we're gonna take the vote on the approval of the town budget um uh operating budget next. Uh, on Monday, and that's all we're going to, pretty much all we're going to do on Monday, it's just that and um, uh, the final warrant. Um, is there anything, uh, though, that anybody wants to bring up on the town budget tonight out of sight of the file, uh, fire department capital requests uh, for next week's meeting? Okay, operating capital all set. All right, uh, we'll move on to uh, fire, fire department capital requests. George. Would you be willing to come up here? <clears throat> so, um, Greg, I'm going to rely on you for some of the numbers. But basically, um, we the the source of this uh, discussion is um, uh, there were some. Uh, savings by virtue of the fact that the um, uh, actual calculation of the budget for the fire department had some errors in it, so it came up below, it, the actual numbers came up below where we thought they were going to be. There was also a fair amount of money generated by auction of existing equipment, um, <coughs> generating something like $40,000 of revenue for the town. and. <coughs> Uh, the question is, can we uh, support uh, putting some of that money towards um, some, uh, fixing up some of the capital uh, equipment in the fire department? For example, um, uh, uh, hoses and, and the like. And the chief sent us a very long and detailed um, presentation on that, which uh, we're not going to go through all of that here. Um, uh, but we want to discuss the basics of it and um, get an opinion from board members of what what your opinions are about um, uh, dedicating some of the money from the auction, auction towards some of the capital items that the chief has listed here. Um, and at this point, I guess I'll just open it up for discussion. Well, in order to do that, it has to be voted, correct? 
Right. So you because could auction or so right funds go into the general fund. The funds received through the auction resides in the general fund. Go into the general fund. So to spend it, voters need to approve right. it. Right. So for example, in your capital article, you could list you know, miscellaneous fire equipment right. at X dollars, and then the source of funding be from the general fund, but parenthetically could explain that it got into the general fund through the sale of surplus equipment. Not sure voters are going to want to are going to care about that kind of detail, but we can certainly offer it if it gets asked. So, um, <clears throat> the if we dedicated about. 20,000 from that fund, we could cover most of these items here. Is that correct? Yes. Um, the, the biggest item on the list is the, the UTV, and that one, it would be a little bit difficult to put that under, in my opinion, miscellaneous equipment on the warrant. That's the sort of thing that would need to be called out as a separate Right. That'd be a standalone, that'd be a separate line item in capital. Um, I do have um, concerns about the political uh, mm -hmm. viability of that one on the warrant right now. But a lot of these other things um, seem like fairly basic uh, updates to used up equipment. Um, I agree. So what I would um, personally be inclined to support is um, uh, the capital requests here uh, outside of the bigger item of the UTV um, and paying for all of them with the, um, the auction money. Um, you said to, to a about approximately 20,000. I believe that's right. Yeah. So while that makes perfect sense from a tactical perspective, where I have the issue is the um, time frame of these, ca I feel like we're, we're replaying our record from last year, okay, of we're now at the 11th hour, we're, we're now looking at additional capital costs that have come up over time. I know that we've talked about having a plan against this, um, but and, and I think the things that you're asking for here, replacing hoses, this should be standard operating kinds of things that we do to maintain our force, okay? So that's an important piece of this. But what I'm concerned with is the, again, the pace and the timing of how we're doing this because we're now four days away, or a week away, less than a week away, of voting the final budget and then what we're doing and now we're talking about new items again so I understand the reason why I understand all the pieces that are here but I go back to procedurally I feel like we're we're shoving things in at the last minute and that's what's bothering me about the topic yeah so, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I do understand what you're saying and um, uh, so one thing that we had earlier that was <coughs> Uh, helpful to us is the capital plan that came out and we got from the, on February 5th, which laid out the vehicles and the years in which they're going to be replaced. And um, uh, actually what I was originally envisioning when I asked the chief to put together this um, uh, PowerPoint or, that he, or a list that he did for us was something along those lines for the other capital items. And, um, <clears throat> I actually appreciate the fact that he did this because it gave me a visual walkthrough mm -hmm. of what's there. And I don't need this every single year, but it's very useful to have it, and it's very useful to have um, uh, you know, simple indications of what, they, what the, th these things are actually for. It is, is a, a useful education process for me. What I, what I would like um, is, in the future, it would help with the problem that you're talking about, is if we actually had um, sort of a formalized schedule where a, a, 
I don't want to say formalized, a little bit of a standardized schedule um, of the, the various major capital um, items in the um, fire department's purview in the schedule on what in which they typically would need to be replaced. I think we tend to lose track of that a little bit. Um, uh, and whether or not our, our capital budget is um, scheduled property to keep up with that. It's not. And, and I tried to make that point clear last year with the first installment of the vehicles. Because of that same sort of comment and question, I produced another product that showed the colors and when the turnout gear and the SCBAs need to re be replaced, as well as uh, money that, and depending on your strategy, whether you want to buy something all at once or put money away every year, that's all laid out based on those big ticket items that I talked about in the presentation. Mr. Chairman, that's already been done. I've already given you the best I can give as far as a schedule and a prediction of when things are, uh, need to be replaced. Some things you can't predict. Mm -hmm. The compressor is something that's going to go at any minute, and then we're going to have a $5,000 or more bill to pay. And I can't predict that, but I can keep it going, and I've used operating funds to keep all of those big ticket items at least viable without asking for capital. And if I could double back on something else, I asked for the UTV. Uh, at the beginning of the budget process, but a tactical decision or a strategic decision was made that we go for the ambulance hoping that we could fill in some of the capability gap and it was determined that was too big of a pill to swallow. And I get that, I understand that. As of today, we've made $44,000 on the online auction. I'm asking for a portion of that to try and fill in that gap and I don't I don't understand the, the political strategies and the optics. I've been asking for different things at different points and because of the need to spread the wealth, and I get it, some things have been uh, eliminated early on in the process and they may not even have made it to you. Uh, here's an opportunity for us to get well and eliminate the deficiencies I showed you on those slides with one purchase. And I don't understand why us being able to get to an emergency scene that exists on the beach or on one of the conservation trails, if you're going to put money and effort into the trails and to the beach, we ought to have the ability to respond to them. We've also had our first planning meeting for uh, the fireworks display. 8,000 people on the beach at one time uh, over a four-hour period or so it is an awful lot to ask without that capability. So I'm just trying to plan ahead strategically and try and give us, as the governance of the town, the capability to protect the citizens, the visitors, and the businesses. And uh, I can't say anything more than I said in the presentation. Uh, I appreciate the feedback, that it was visually um, helpful, but a lot of that information has already been out, out there. And all of you are so busy, I get it, and maybe I failed to communicate in a, a, a clearer, easier way. But these are things that I think we need right now. And I don't think anything that I asked for in that presentation should be deferred. I, I think it's all important, and we don't even use up all the $44,000 that we've made to this point. We're still going to make more money. Not a lot. The vehicles were the big ticket items. But we're going to still be drawing in some more. So there's going to be more added to the general fund. I think now is the time to do it because I've been trying to manage some of the smaller capital items with operating funds. And as long as the vehicles don't break, I can do that. Unfortunately, they do break, and that's where I end up falling short. So that's why I asked for the things that I did in the order that I did. I, I can't take $20,000 out of the operating budget to buy a UTV. The other things I could probably manage, we're still going to fall short. But if you're only going to give or provide $20,000, I'd buy the UTV. And I'd respectfully ask that you give everything I asked for. It still leaves money left over, and there's more money coming in. Does the police department still own their vehicle? Yes. Is it? Do we have one? We have one. Is it? It's not equipped the same way. Right. It's an ATV. It's a one-seat operation that carries a person. Right. Can't carry anything else. I mean, you could jerry-rig a stretcher on the front like you see at the beginning of MASH where they walk the getters on the front of the Jeeps and there's a person on either side of it, but that's not very efficient. Okay.
Um, Greg, prior to next Monday's meeting, will you get us updated sheets for the budget book for fire because some of the numbers have changed? Yes, I have those. Oh, yep. good. Yep. Because I, I'd like to look at all of that again before I. Okay. Um, I just have it. Maury, has FinCom voted the capital article? Uh, yeah, we're going to try and talk about it tomorrow evening. And, uh, it, it's been touched on in multiple meetings. Right. Okay. We've, we've hit it pretty hard. And this additional request? Or? I'm not entirely sure of these particular mm -hmm. items. may still be discussed. Got it. Okay. <coughs> so you think you do it in the beginning of the meeting tomorrow night? Um, probably in the middle because we have Dan Sherman coming in and the auditors. Oh, right. Okay. So it's, I think it's on for about 8 o'clock, but trying to stay on schedule with those two is always a challenge. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm good with the information, and I think it would be good to think about it and yep. come back to it on Monday. Yep. All right. So, <clears throat> so far, your feedback is uh, you, there's at least. 20,000 that we're pretty comfortable with. And uh, uh, we'll bring Tom in and we'll finalize it on Monday. Thank you very much for your consideration and I sincerely appreciate uh, the time you took to review the numbers and the items and uh, with the continued discussion. Well, I thank you for the time you put into the um, write up. That was obviously a lot of time. Thanks for acknowledging that. Okay. Consent agenda. Oh, good evening, Mr. Wilson. It looks like you're planning on leaving. I was. You may, if you wish. <laughs> Run, go. Can you back the Yes. <laughs> nice to see you as always. Thank you, Alan. Um, oh, wow, look at that. One, two, three, item number seven, yeah, the consent <laughs> agenda. You didn't see that until just now. I've been working just way too hard. Issue. Item number seven, the consent agenda. Anybody have anything that they want to hold out of the consent agenda? We have board of select minutes um, from February 5th, 2018. Actually, I will take those out because Tom's not here. Right. And I also have an Susan amendment, which I, or I have done. Notes. I'll send him. That's fine. So we're going to push that out to next Monday anyway. Um, uh, overlay surplus report from uh, Jenny Thompson. Surplus property request from the fire chief. More stuff that he wishes, wishes to sell. Um, uh, a reserve fund transfer for request for the Chowder House project, which I'm going to let Greg talk to you in just a minute. And the Comcast Form 500 complaint data. So Comcast Form 500 complaint data is the one where citizens complain, residents complain, or make complaints to Comcast about la a loss of service or um, uh, things that need to be repaired. And Comcast has to supply that information back to us each year. And it's also the information that is used to determine uh, whether or not uh, there are real deficiencies in their support of their tenure contract for us. So it's important that people do, in fact, um, formalize their complaints to Comcast if they have them. Uh, okay, uh, Greg, you want to talk about Chatterhouse? So on the Chatterhouse, um, as you know, we've been um, working with the contractor to come up with a, a change order to accommodate the, um, the additional rot and the lack of support. Um, we've come to a, a, a good resolution and a, and, a, and a good solid number. So it's a $46,000 um, change order, and the proposal is to fund that 50% uh, from the reserve fund and 50% from additional monies from community preservation fund. Um, so the request before you today is for that reserve fund half, the 23000 And if you were to approve that, it would leave the reserve fund um, with $63,000 still in its account. For this fiscal year? For this fiscal year, yep. yep. And then you would be presumably uh, adding to the next budget in order to uh, refill that? Yeah. Oh, well. And the... Um, so the reserve fund gets refilled in the new year, yeah. but not 
not specifically this 23,000. Right. And the other half from the Community Preservation Fund. <clears throat> um, so that would, have, that would be. Um, it's a town meeting vote. Yeah. Was that project actually already on the list? Or is that something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Have they already approved that? Yes, they have. Okay, comments? Makes sense. We don't really have a tremendous option because... Well, that's it. We've got to get the work finished. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it could have been a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And we're still on target to finish? Yeah, so they, they are asking for another two weeks. So instead of April 15th, it would be the April 28th or 9th. But we're still prior to May 1st. Correct. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, any other comments here? Oops, excuse me, sorry. sorry. Do you need a motion? <laughs> I need a nap. <laughs> I need a really long nap. Uh -huh. um, yes, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you. Oh, well, you oh. took the minutes out, correct? Yes. yes. I took the minutes out. Um, second. Got a second. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 All of opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, town administrator's report. Um, so with the proposed roundabout, you saw the article or the letter to the editor in the paper. Um, I think it may make some sense to sit down with um, with at least some members of the dip to make sure we're working in concert here. And yes, it's already fueling a little bit of consternation. Yes, I, I've gotten some emails and calls mm -hmm. from different business owners and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we, yeah, we surprised. need to proceed very methodically and get information out and mm -hmm. have, a, have a clear game plan. Yeah, and I was rather specific about this at the last meeting, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to attend on that. When is the next dip meeting? I'll have to, I'm not sure. I'll have to find out. I'll let you know. Uh, Complete Streets Award, um, about two hundred and forty some odd thousand dollars in a grant award um, to to do uh, four projects, um, not all eight that we had requested, um, but a good start. So three intersections in terms of um, better um, striping and, and realignment of of some of the intersections and, and the crosswalks here at um, at School and Central. Also up at the head of Beach and Union, and then also over at Washington and Summer and C. And then the fourth project is for a wider path um, down to the beach from from Masco Park to the beach itself. So the proposal there is for a eight to ten foot wide um, sidewalk down to the beach. From starting where down the bottom. So starting from Masco. from Masco, from the entrance to Masco, to to the to the beach itself. So that's being accomplished by taking more of the parkland um, to widen. Yes, a little bit. Yeah, most likely winding it towards the street, because mm. that there's a, a pretty good roll of large trees there. Mm. Um, so. So making the street narrower or not? No. Okay. That's it might a little bit on on the upper end towards the beach. Uh -huh. um, you may have to come out into the road a little bit, but there's room. Okay. Um, well, we'll see the plans before. Then. Yes, you'll see absolutely. And this capital <laughs> is so. already in our capital plan. The so our share is share. is in the capital. We we have to um, contribute about thirty two thousand dollars towards the effort for engineering work, and so that is in the proposed capital. <clears throat> and uh, remind me of the process on this. These are prioritized projects, right? Um, 
so it went through the, the complete street process <laughs> uh, where there were workshops and hearings and you held, held uh, meetings yeah. um, and then approved the grant application, which included, as I say, I think there were eight altogether in that application. Um, but there's, there's lots of time to um, have these come back before you and have public input and comment right. um, before, before anything happens on, on the ground. So we will make, uh, we'll be going through that process over the next few months. Uh, well, it would be nice to um, tie this with the dip proposal and the shifting of the rotary because it, this is all talking about streets. Correct, it is. Know, so yes. rather than having separate topics, we right. should have a comprehensive Bundle them up. Yes. story that says here's what we're doing, here are the four yeah. options that we're talking about. Framing it up from that perspective, at least, I think. Yeah, I agree. That makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. All right. Well. Anybody have anything that we haven't discussed that they want to bring up tonight? We will see you on Monday. Monday. Right and early. Six. Six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Um, so we, uh, hmm? we have a, a definitive calendar. I, I didn't realize we we're meeting on Monday. You know, we uh, had left a tentative one in there a couple of meetings ago right. when we talked about the possibility of uh, needing to get some more discussion on the marijuana vote. So uh, we left a tentative one in there. Uh, Is there a list ago. of going forward of all the meetings? I'll, I'll get you one. Then, yeah. I, I had something significant. Next one after here. that is March 5th. Uh, no, that's that is March fifth. Um, uh, yeah. So the next regular one is March fifth. Yeah. Right. And uh, so you have two twenty six. Okay. Uh, get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Get a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed?